so for Kawhi, of course, he's a part of all the trade rumors out there, right? So we'll start things off with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And there's been some buzz out there that Cleveland has been inquiring about Kawhi Leonard perhaps going to Ohio. Now, this according to USA Today, and the deal reportedly has gained no traction. And this is not all too surprising to me because if you look at the competition for Kawhi Leonard, you got the 76ers, you got the Boston Celtics. Those two teams have more assets than the Cleveland Cavaliers to get a trade done. Now, Kawhi announced earlier this month that he doesn't want to play in San Antonio anymore, or at least according to the reports. That's his preference. Now, the desired team, of course, the L.A. Lakers. Mentioned earlier, it seems unlikely that that's going to happen because I don't think the Spurs would be willing to trade Kawhi within the Western Conference, although you guys know that I'm not ruling it out completely. Now, the problem is, like I said, the 76ers and the Celtics will be in the running, and they have many more enticing pieces on that team that it could be difficult for the Cavs to kind of outbid the likes of Philadelphia and the likes of Boston. So, yes, the Cavs inquired. Yes, the Spurs are listening. But no real traction as we stand right now with Kawhi and Cleveland. Now, the 76ers and the Celtics. Yes, they are the favorites to land Kawhi Leonard. So we'll get to those Vegas odds as well. The Celtics are at plus 175. The 76ers are at plus 285. How about this team in third? The Orlando Magic to get Kawhi Leonard. These are legit Vegas odds. Then you got the Spurs at plus 500. Sure, can make an argument that he remains there. Maybe they rectify things within that organization. And sure, LA makes total sense because, well, you've heard me talk about it before. But Orlando, can anybody in the comments section like reason with why the Magic are here at three. I just don't really understand. And the Magic are kind of playing the long game right now. It's not like they're trying to contend in the NBA next season because they won't, even if they do try. So interesting, but I do like Boston. I do like Philadelphia here. Now, what's attractive for both these teams? Boston could have four first-round picks in the 2019 NBA draft. Jalen Brown could be part of a trade for Leonard because they both play the same position. Meanwhile, with Philly, Markel Fultz, you got Sarich as well. Covington could be a part of the conversation. And Philly also has the number 16 overall pick, Zaire Smith, and Miami Heat's unprotected first-round selection for 2021. So... If you're the Cleveland Cavaliers leadership, you're saying to yourselves, yeah, we probably can't compete with that. Meanwhile, it could be an outbidding kind of war between Boston and Philadelphia. So let's say that Philadelphia loses out on the LeBron James sweepstakes. LeBron goes to L.A. Paul George goes to L.A. as well. So Philly is like, well, crap. Now they are firmly in the Kawhi Leonard discussion. Now, the order of all this matters. I think the order is LeBron texts Paul George. He gets confirmation that Paul George wants to go to the Lakers. All right, so check there. Then LeBron makes the decision. He's going to L.A. Check. Paul George announces he's going to L.A. Check. Philly's like, all right, so now we got to make a move for Kawhi because we need that next piece to make that next step and beat Boston in, in the Eastern Conference playoffs. So Philly makes a move. Tries to get Kawhi, Boston comes into the fray, and then it's a bidding war between the two franchises. And I think, I think that Philadelphia wins out. So I think I'm going to throw up my heart here and give the 76ers some love in this reaction poll because, yes, the assets are enticing. And there's a reason why Mikel Bridges is no longer on the 76ers. Right? There's a reason why he was traded, and they got Zaire Smith, and Harris Rubenstein and I were right here at this very desk scratching our heads in terms of why that happened. Well, now we know. The reasoning is the 76ers will be making a run at Kawhi Leonard. If you ask Vegas, Philly and Boston are the two favorites. All right, let's get to the next rumor, but first, a word 
about AutoList. They are sponsoring the show today. Are you looking for a new used, newer used car out there? Tired of browsing a million sites? Go to AutoList.com to browse the largest inventory on the web or download their top rated mobile app for iPhone or Android today. All right, let's go next up on the list. The Spurs to keep Kawhi. Is that a real possibility? So writer Jason McIntyre says, that the Spurs may refuse all trade deals for one reason or another and keep Kawhi for another year. Now, this is a very interesting perspective. McIntyre of USA Today writing that the logic is if Kawhi is traded to a team, he's basically a one-year rental outside of the LA Lakers because if he goes to Philly or he goes to Boston, that's not exactly where he wants to be, right? He wants to be in L.A., and Philly and Boston are like the exact opposite if you want to look at it from a geographical perspective. So maybe Kawhi, if the Spurs are fielding these offers, say, look, I'll just stay another year. I'll just stay with you guys. I'll gut it out. I'll become a free agent in 2019. I will waltz and join the Lakers. And I think that's what McIntyre is really going for here is that there's no point to make a deal with the 76ers or the Boston Celtics from the perspective of Boston and Philly because it's a one-year rental and the perspective of the Spurs because Kawhi doesn't want to go there perhaps. So they keep Kawhi for a year, he becomes a free agent in 2019, and he goes on his merry way. Now, if you're the Boston Celtics or the Philadelphia 76ers, you're obviously rolling the dice if you do get a trade for Kawhi Leonard to come to fruition. Why? Like I said, because he's becoming a free agent in 2019. Here is the kicker, though. What if Kawhi all of a sudden enjoys playing in TD Garden, enjoys playing in the city of brotherly love, and he decides, look, I'll extend with you guys and I'll just remain. That's where things could be interesting. And in a sense, that could be what the likes of Boston and Philly are kind of banking on like, hey, let's show you the city. You'll love it here. We've got a good core of players on both sides, Philly and Boston. And maybe L.A. will become an afterthought at that point for you. And maybe Kawhi will just be all good to remain with that team, whether it is the 76ers or whether it is the Boston Celtics. Maybe. Again, it's a roll of the dice, and if you're Boston and if you're Philly, are you willing to give up those assets? The likes of Fultz and Zaire Smith and that Heat unprotected first rounder or Jalen Brown or the treasure chest of first round selections perhaps for Boston? Are you willing to give those up for a one-year Kawhi Leonard or an extended Kawhi Leonard? But again, that is not guaranteed. So. It's an interesting perspective that we have here and something that you guys should probably keep in mind as we go throughout these Kawhi Leonard rumors throughout the month of June and into July. Now, Pau Gasol has weighed in on this whole situation, and it's a pretty interesting statement. He doesn't think that Kawhi and his relationship with the Spurs can be rectified. It's pretty big stuff. Pau Gasol, a veteran there with the Spurs, saying, quote, I don't know if a multi-million dollar offer would fix it. And Kawhi can get that big time contract of 200 million plus dollars if he really wants to remain. Uh, and Gasol also noted that he hasn't talked to Kawhi recently, which is, by the way, somewhat concerning because Gasol is like one of the most respected players on the team. And the fact that he hasn't talked to Kawhi tells me that he could be on his way out. So, yeah. Gasol weighs in on the Kawhi Leonard situation. Now, the Spurs and Kawhi met face-to-face -face last week, but the outcome has not been reported. And like I said, if Gasol's weighing in, Kawhi could be just on borrowed time at this point with San Antonio. So... There you go. Next up, Kawhi does not need a big market, perhaps. So as we continue to talk about the likes of L.A. and Boston and Philadelphia as trade destinations here, perhaps Kawhi would be willing to go smaller. All right, so NBA reporter Peter Vesey said the following, quote, many people believe 
that Leonard's reps are happy with the hostilities, so he'll be traded to a big market. That's untrue, according to Vesey, asserts his source. Quote, we all think he's better off in San Antonio. We'd all like to see him stay, but he's the offended party. It's his decision. Kawhi's pulling all the levers. So perhaps the only desired destination isn't just L.A. It could be a Milwaukee or a Phoenix. Now, I could be sounding crazy, but again, maybe the Lakers are not the only team on Kawhi's list here. So if the Spurs are truly against trading within the Western Conference, Kawhi may have to get a little creative, if you will, with his options because that means no L.A. And if the Spurs don't get a good enough offer from Philly or Philly gets LeBron and Boston doesn't really want Kawhi, again, you got to get creative here. So perhaps he plays as a one-year rental somewhere random, right, and then becomes a free agent and then eventually joins the L.A. Lakers. The same logic that I was talking about earlier with the Celtics and the 76ers. So the only issue is that uh, if Paul George and LeBron are already there with the Lakers, Kawhi probably can't join L.A. because of salary cap problems, but we'll see if they can maneuver around that roster. We'll cross that bridge if we come to it. Now, the best team for Kawhi this summer, let me know in comments. Lakers, Celtics, 76ers, or Cavs?